<clears throat> All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakwadash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power will be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the apostles and the other bishops of Great Millstone who taught me his truth. And salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amuan Gobar, and I'm back with another lesson. Low will is quick, edifying, straight, and to the point. And as you see in the title, everyone is talking about World War III. It's about time for the whore Babylon the Great to be judged. Again, everybody's talking about World War III. And it is about time for the whore Babylon the Great to be judged. And this is a clip I had uploaded, or a video I had uploaded from um, the page Jason A. And he put together a few news clips concerning the breaking news as of a few days ago. Um, Iran, Iran, Iranian attack on Israel and the whole conflict that's going on in the Middle East. You're going to see some clips from that segment, which I uploaded. And I, I entitled it, World War Three is going down. But not before a particular major prophecy comes to pass. Which prophecy? With a question mark. So that's the name of this video that you see on the screen. World War Three is going down. It's inevitable. But not before a particular major prophecy comes to pass. And which prophecies that I'm talking about? So for those of you that do know, that are here, you know, in the faith, tuned in, listening, learning, comprehending, walking in the spirit, then you know that that prophecy is the mass implementation of the mark of the beast. And with that being said, as World War Three and the talks of World War Three ramps up, then that should only mean that us measuring the times diligently, then what's the next prophecy to come to pass as we are measuring the times diligently? What will be next? What will be the next major thing to happen? So that tells us that real soon, this devil will come with the mass mandate of the mark of the beast. That's coming. All right. This is getting too hot. It's getting too hot in the Middle East right now. You got the two. You got two players in the game right now going at it with each other that are backed by two bigger players in the game. All right. You got Israel, which the United States of, of Babylon said that they vow the king of Babylon. You know, the impudent king of Babylon himself said that he vows to defend Israel at all costs. So if Iran is going at Israel, not if, but by Iran going at Israel, right, and Babylon saying that they're going to help out Iran, then Russia also said that, listen, if anybody touches Iran, then us, Russia, myself, the Russians, Putin, all right, and China also vowed the same thing, that they're going to defend um, Iran. So these two little cats is fighting. You got Israel and Iran, Iran going at it. And then... The bigger brothers is watching to see who's going to jump in. Whoever get, whoever jumps in to try to do something, then the other bigger brothers going to attack. And that's where, that's where we stand right now in so many words. All right? That's why the scriptures say, I got this precept. I'm going um, I'm to bring it out. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 49 and verse 20, it says, Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, that he hath taken against Edom. Who was Edom? The so-called white man, the Edomites, all right? And all these European nations and NATO nations, they're all Edomites. The beast, Edomites. The beast system, Edomites. It says, um, it's like it says that he taketh against Edom and his, and his purposes that he hath proposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their de their habitation desolate with them. So it says, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. The least of the flock is talking about Amalek. All right, Amalek. Amalek, uh, um, Amalek are the Edomites. I right? want Esau's grandsons. So in particular, the tribe of Amalek today will be the small hats. Okay, a.k.a. the so-called 
J-E-W-S. Those that have inhabited and stole our land and stole everything as we know it. Those are the least of the flock. So the least of the flock are drawing them out. Who are they drawing out? The men of war. All right, they're drawing out pretty much they 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 they're poking at these the, the Middle Eastern countries. They're poking at the, the um these other major players, right? Look at what they've been doing over there since when last year, I believe, or the year before. I mean, they've been, you know, going at uh Palestine, but as of recent, last year, they really went at it around October, somewhere around September, October. You know, and they just been going at it and and you had all these other um Ishmaelite aka Arab nations, you know, getting getting riled up at what was going on and the injustice that was taking place to their fellow Palestinians. So they were looking at the small hats like, yo, what the fuck? You know, we gonna do something about this. We can't just sit back and, and let it happen. So that was like a little start of it. But now they're really poking at the bear by messing with Iran and Iran getting involved. And the apostle been saying that Iran, you know, uh, America, Babylon, they they really want to get at Iran. And at this point, Esau can stage an event just like he did during 9-11 to justify going into Afghanistan and, and, you know, going over there in the Middle East. Esau can stage an event where he sets up a, a T attack and blame it on Iran. It could, it could be him. It will be him, just like he did in times past. You know, set up an attack, stage an event and blame it on Iran and say, see, we got we to gotta do something about this, you know, but... Things are going to pace itself because the ultimate prophecy must come to pass and it is the prophecy of the market B. So this thing is going to, is this going to move quick, but it's also going to pace itself because <clears throat> these nations are ready to go, to go all out war with each other. And the Lord is ready to do it. But like I said, like the, like the scriptures say, like the apostles been saying, Yahweh Shah said it also. He said, you know, we're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, be not trouble because the end is not yet. You know, so don't get all, you know, excited and I mean, get excited because prophecy is happening. But don't get excited to the point where you think Yahweh Shah is coming tomorrow, you know, or next week or next month. You know, a lot of shit got to happen before all hell break loose. Before, uh, I mean, when before World War Three break loose, I mean, a lot of things got to happen. So the least of the flock, like it says in Jeremiah 40, 49, 20, surely the least of the flock, the, the, the Amalekites, the small hats over there in our land. All right. They're the least of the flock. And what they're doing, they're provoking the other nations. They're drawing them out. They're getting them riled up. So I'm going to play this clip. I'm not sure exactly where he says it, but he vows to defend Israel at, at all costs. Our partners with Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. Mm. So everything else, they just they just uh, scripted down here. But like you heard him, he said, we're going to do everything we can to uh, protect Israel's security. And he says, Iron, ironclad, meaning it's, it's unbreakable. That's, that's, I mean, yeah, Esau breaks his word all the time. But we know that they're slaves. This country slaves to them damn small hats over there in the Middle East. Because all these politicians and higher ups, they ain't nothing but small hats themselves. So they vow to protect the, their, you know, our land. Or um, the inhabitants of that land, which are the small has, but really it's our land. But the Lord is going to strip it from them. That, that's the beauty of it all. They fighting for something that don't belong to them. All right, showing you that the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name, like it says in Genesis, um, Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse 3. Salakio. You know, the Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. So the Lord is the one that's mustering all of this right here, all of this, you know, vow to protect Israel no matter what. So let's just pray that. You know, things intensify between Israel and Iran. Right now, see, like like the scriptures say, the least of the flock shall draw them out. Everybody wants to fucking take down these small hats. Everybody want a piece of them. Everybody. Everybody hate them. The whole world hates them. The scripture said, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it real quick. What the scriptures say about these um small heads. Obadiah chapter one and two. It says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. 
right? And also say in Jeremiah 49 and 15, it says, For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen and despised among men. So everybody hate these on top, you know, you, of course, everybody hate Esau, but on top of Esau, you got the small among them, the least among them, which are the small hats. We all, everybody hate them. Everybody hate them, and they're they going to take them out the way because the Lord is going to do it. And that's why back in Jeremiah 49 and 20, it says, Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. So what the Lord is going to do is not only just destroy Babylon the Great, but also he's going to take out, he's going to have to do a, a house cleaning in that land once known as the land of Israel because Yasharal ain't, ain't there right now. The prince of the powers ain't there right now. The small hat devils, they're there. So let me play some of this clip right here, this video, and I'm going to get a few precepts and that'll be that. A government that's determined to create a situation where there's 100% security for Israel, which I think is impossible without mm -hmm. some sort of peace treaty. The world watching to see how Israel will respond after Iran's massive drone and missile attack on Saturday. Israel's war cabinet is meeting right now to discuss potential retaliation as world leaders, including President Biden, urge restraint. It marked the first time Iran has attacked Israel directly from its own soil. Explosions could be heard widely, including in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. More than 300 projectiles were launched. First came over 170 drones and 30 cruise missiles, all shot down before reaching Israel. Well, what happens if American bases are attacked in, in Iraq or Syria? Uh, there's all sorts of places that the Iranians can hit through proxies. And let's keep in mind that this attack um, on Israel was a measured attack because they didn't use Hezbollah. Mm. Hezbollah could do immediate damage and considerable damage to Israel. And, you know, the, the Iranians are holding that back. But should, should this escalate, Hezbollah will be pulled into it. I, I think the next thing we might see is a large-scale is, Israeli campaign in the north of Israel going into southern Lebanon to attack Hezbollah. And the main reason for that is that Israel um, uh, is justifiably fearful of Hezbollah being able to do on a much larger scale what Hamas did down in the south. Uh, in Gaza on October 7 by coming across the, the, the fence to attack Israeli. If, if um, Hezbollah attempts to do that in the north of the country, that's a, a large populated area, uh, it really does present an existential threat to the future security of, of Israel. This morning, the world on edge as Israel weighs its response to that swarm of more than 300 Iranian missiles and drones early Sunday targeting military installations in Israel, some of them streaking right over the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. Uh, this is, hey, this is what the Lord said will happen. Told that roughly half of the ballistic missiles fired by Iran failed to launch or crashed. It was one of the largest salvos of ballistic and cruise missiles ever fired. But Israel's missile defense system, along with a combined international effort led by the U.S., intercepting 99% of those threats, including more than 100 ballistic missiles, according to the IDF. U.S. forces alone taking out nearly 90 drones and missiles long before they reached Israel's borders. Iran's attack came with careful signaling. Its government warned Israel's allies of the strikes and said they were punishment for an assassination in Syria and that Iran now considered the matter closed. Our advice to all the supporters of the Zionist regime is to appreciate Iran's responsible and measured action and dissuade the Zionist regime from committing more wicked acts, which would bring incalculable consequences. But the country's military chief did say just a short time ago that Israel will indeed respond. World leaders are urging Israel not to retaliate, including the got, U.S., making it clear that if it attacks Iran, it will... Got a quick preset. You know, all these nations and their mindset, it's ultimately Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah for these times that we're living in because, you know, decades ago, these nations weren't, you know, as, as bold as they are now. So this is the book of Joel 3 and verse 10. And it reads on and say, matter of fact, I'll start at 9. Joel 3 and 9, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. You see, and that's what's happening right now. 
all right? The, the Gentiles, these heathen nations are preparing for war. The mighty men, the military men, they're all ri ri rising up, all right? They're coming together. They're, they're joining forces as far as these mil military groups are, are, are increasing in numbers, and they're preparing for war. They're preparing for war, okay? They hate America, and they hate that land, Israel, right now. They hate those, they hate the American Edomites, and they hate them, the Zionist regime, okay? Which are the small hats. It says, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. A plowshare is a, a tool used to cultivate, right? So in other words, take your cultivating tools and make swords. So in other words, whatever, you know, take your resources that you would normally use for agriculture, whether it's money, tools, whatever, whatever type of, you know, any type of resources they can take and use, take that and apply that energy into weaponry. All right. That's what they're doing. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. And they ain't talking about, you know, uh, you know, machetes and, and actual spear chucking spears. But it's talking about nuclear ar arsenal. All right. ICBM missiles, weapons of mass destruction, rockets, things of that nature. Like it tells us that in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter. And then it reads on to say, let the weak say, I am strong. That's what these nations are saying. The, the once uh, fearful nations of America, Babylon the Great, they're saying we're strong. L listen, we're saying they're saying, yo, they, years ago, decades ago, these countries wouldn't dare, you know, fuck with America and, and, and Israel and none of that because they know they're backed by the Americans. But the way they're coming at Babylon the Great and coming at, sm at the small hats now is the weak saying I'm strong because they got nuclear capability. And guess what? They got China and Russia backing them. You know, North Korea and different other countries are are backing these smaller nations that, you know, that, that these bigger nations have investments within. You know, so that came to mind. Beat your plowshares into sword and your pruning hooks into spears. All right. It says, let the weak say I am strong. So let me play on some more. Do so alone. President Biden's retaliate, including the U.S., making it clear that if it attacks Iran, it will do so alone. President Biden still reaffirming his overall support for Israel, though, adding, together with our partners, we defeated that attack. But historically, this is the first time the United States fought side by side with Israel since the state of Israel uh, was organized in 1948. And by that, I mean Central Command, a world fighting headquarters in the Middle East, organized a multinational uh, organization and coordinated it through six countries and that is our most experienced war fighting headquarters israel is used to fighting unilaterally so what central command did was really significant and just think of this Stuart, we had arab nations fighting alongside of israel's capability against iran that is also historic this was a fairly symbolic attack that the, the Iranians conducted. Uh, I think a lot of the drones were decoys. They weren't armed. Um, and the Iranians did hit some Israeli bases. We don't know what the damage is. Um, the United States is trying to portray this as an absolute success, but let's wait to see. Okay. And you know, keep in mind the swarming attacks could be conducted from, from any of these countries, including Yemen, and again, let's let's look at the cost of defending Israel. It was a billion. Keep in mind, all those Middle Eastern countries out there hates Israel, and they hate America. Not too long ago, remember when you know what they did to Yemen? You know they, you know they, they I believe they what did they do? They bombed or destroyed one of those major players, and you had um, Yemen talking about death to America. They they came together in big ass groups. You know, of the thousands and chanting death to America. I mean, they show you that in um, Leave the World Behind when they was dropping down those red flyers. And the one dude said, it said, it reads, it says, um, what do you say? It says death to America. And them little tickets that they dropped out the airplane. You see, so that's the notion that, that these nations are sending towards America is death to America. So what's going to happen before... The Lord actually does bring death to America. Major prophecies are ahead of us. All right, great persecution is coming. We are we are in, we are on the hate list. Like Apostle, other Apostle did that video. Of course, we know we're in a Southern Poverty Law, 
but there was an actual list. Lord, when I do a land back on that video, but um, actual list. GMS Great Millstone falls on number six of the hate groups inside of America or something like that. America's hate groups, and we fall on that list. So what do you think they're gonna do when the devil's ready to bring censorship and come down with the great wrath? He's gonna target those that are a threat, and we are a threat to this man's system. We are a threat because. We have we are the ones that the Heavenly Father has set up to be the voice for the people. Alright, the voice for the nation. Yasharala. Alright? Really revealing his skirts, revealing who this devil really is. So things are gonna get crazy out here, man. And all praise to Yahweh Shai. You know, we need this to happen before, you know, we, we we out of here. I mean, that's just prophecy. Every word of the Heavenly Father is true. And let every man be a liar. So I'm just saying, keep your eyes peeled and don't don't get carried away. Understand that shit is gonna get ugly before it gets good. It ain't just gonna be World War Three and then we just get beamed up and we out of here. That's too easy. There's gonna be great persecution here in America, great persecution here, especially here in Babylon, in different parts of the you know the planet. But really, here is Babylon. That's the main place. It's the golden cup that the Lord is gonna dispose of. You know so. Prepare for that digital system to be implemented real soon. You know, prepare for a societal collapse. Prepare for a terrorist attack, cyber attacks, all type of all type of attacks, civil war. All right, we've seen the movie Civil War. Me and some elders and brothers. You know, very decent movie in my opinion, and it just foreshadowed the things that are coming to Babylon the Great, civil unrest. And to me, I believe that that had to been early in the in the stages of civil war you know had to have been early because during the time when all hell break loose when shit hit the fan jacob's trouble there there ain't gonna be no journalists going out there with their cameras and taking pictures and shit all right that's that's the beginning stage of shit break you know all hell breaking loose and even that is a little too fairy tale for me because i believe when this shit happen it's gonna be that bad ain't nobody gonna be fucking going out there driving around with press vehicles Asking for for permission to you know take pictures and record shit. People is gonna be survival of the fittest, all right. In that movie Civil War, cannibalism ain't happened yet, all right. So yeah, it's gonna get bad out here. It's gonna get that bad. So let me play on this. Billion dollars. That's the estimate so far of all these anti missiles and anti drone weapons. That's a lot of money. You can't do this forever. Video circulating online verified by ABC News showing one of the very few Iranian missiles that hit their target, causing minor damage to an Israeli Air Force base. For Tehran and its Revolutionary Guard Corps, they have unsurprisingly vowed to retaliate even more harshly to any Israeli action. The bigger the Israeli attack, the larger the Iranian response and the greater the risk of escalation into uncontrolled regional conflict. And in Tehran today, a massive rally in support of the attack on Israel. Iranian leaders signaling they don't want an escalation, saying that after their assault, they consider the matter closed. But tonight, Iran... Mm -hmm. You hear that? Allegedly, after Iran did what they did, they say, all right, you know what, we're done. <laughs> they, they consider it case closed or, all right, we retaliated, so we good now. But guess what? That's not how you saw play. You saw it could slap you first. And if you slap him back, he still got to slap you last. So, yeah, you know, ain't no, ain't no shooting a fair one with Esau Edom. So, yeah, that's not happening. You heard what he said. He said they considered a fair one because they retaliated. That's not happening. Esau don't play like that. He, he don't play like that. He's like one of them kids that you get, once you get them started, they don't know when to stop. Well, that's Esau. So scriptures say they're that younger than I have, have me in derision. Esau is the young, he's the youngin'. You know, don't know when to stop. Warning Israel, if it takes additional action, Iran will respond within seconds. <laughs> you, know, you can understand why. No one wants a third world war. But Israel doesn't seem to get the leeway to retaliate that other nations do when they are attacked. Hmm. There's an unreality in how I think both Biden in, in recent weeks um, and the Albanese government have been talking about Israel. Uh, there's this sort of fantasy world that ceasefires must happen straight away. Uh, they say uh, there could be no future for Hamas in Gaza, but the only way Hamas is not going to have a future in Gaza is if the Israeli Defence Force defeats them in battle. 
Hamas is not going to give up its military capabilities, and nor is Hezbollah in Lebanon. So it's all very well for, you know, left-centre governments to sort of talk about the importance of peace and the value of restraint, but they really need to focus on the reality of what's going on in the Middle East, and that is Israel is fighting for its life. Man, fuck them small heads. <clears throat> Israel fighting for their life. Yeah, yeah, the real Israelites are fighting for their life. Fuck you talking about, nigga. You know, we fighting for our life, you know, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, our life and his truth. But them small ass, man, listen. So I'm going to get a little more precepts and, you know, just blowing the trumpet in Zion. I'm going to read a precept um, off the comment board by the priest, Azan Amath. This is Amos chapter 3 and verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Question mark. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord had not done it? Question mark. It's a rhetorical question because when the trumpet is blowing in the city, people fear. People fear. When there's evil in the city, people fear. And the Lord done it. How about Shem Shai? He does it. So the war trumpet is being blown. The war drums are being thumped and sounding. Right? And it's been happening by the mouth of the prophets, by the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? People hear this word. Whether they take heed or not, they're going to learn to fear the Lord. This city is about to see great evil, like the scriptures say in the Apocrypha, because of the pride, the city shall be troubled. So who is in control of this? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. As the ver next verse, or the next um, scripture the brother put up concludes, it says, Isaiah 45 and 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, Yahweh, do all these things. So our Lord is doing this, man. Our Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai is doing this. And all praises <clears throat> to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. We just, this is just an indicator of where we are in prophecy. All right? This is just an indicator. Matter of fact, let me just read it. Since I quoted earlier, but I'll just read it. All right? In the book of Matthew. This is a... Uh, Matthew, I'm, yeah, Matthew 24 and verse straight to the point 6 it says and you shall hear of wars and rumors of war so we hearing of wars actual wars pro proxy wars wars in general and we're hearing about rumors of war some things we just hear about oh, this this guy say he's gonna do this that guy did this he say he's gonna do that you know we hear actual rumors whether it's true or lies whatever we hear them and we actually hearing of actual wars all right it says, see that you be not troubled. Don't be troubled. Don't be uh, don't be uh uneased. No, don't go crazy. Don't bug out yet. No, don't, don't trip. You know? This ain't the end. Well, Yahweh Shah says, if all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So the wars and rumors of wars is what we're hearing and seeing. Because the time is gonna come where it's not gonna be a war, it's not gonna be a rumor. And it ain't gonna be nothing to be, be hearing. We gonna see this shit. We actually gonna see it. All right. So before we see it, before the before the nukes start flying, before lands and, and continents and countries are destroyed by warlike technology, right? Things gotta happen. And we're gonna constantly push that here, GMS Great Millstone, is that. This devil is going to come down with great wrath because he know that he have a short time because his time is up once World War III is engaged. All right. Once World War III is fully locked in and, and at his pinnacle and his heights, that's the end of this man's kingdom because that's when the nukes are flying. But before that happens, he comes with the great wrath because he knows his time is short and the clock is ticking. That's when he's going to cause all both small, great, rich, poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. All right, the new way of buying and selling, the new way of living. That's what this devil is getting ready to do. And we know it's going to be a short time because how is the elect going to be able to sustain and function in a world, a dystopian society like that? It would be impossible. You know, we would, we would have to be literally hidden from public. We, we can't function in society like that. We cannot. And I say we hopefully being part of that number, we can't. So the Lord is going to have to speed things up. Our faith is going to be tested. We're going to be tried. But those that overcome in the end are going to be delivered. So that's the test. That's the hour of temptation that's going to come upon all the world, like it's saying in Revelation, the third chapter, before World War Three pops off, okay? So, you know, that's why, listen, you know, I'm sure you got 
positive you guys are like groups out there that are saying, yep, World War Three. See, World War Three, we told you. But they missing a major key prophecy, which is the hour of temptation. The mass implementation of the MOTB. That's how you get the people ready. You let them know step by step this is what's going to happen next. You know, because now these people are deceived and under the notion that, yeah, this is it. Iran and Israel are going at it. Next next thing uh, uh, right around the corner is going to be Russia and, and Babylon. And then that's it. We out of here, y'all. Nope, that ain't the case. That's not the case. You know, telling you like it is, like the Lord said, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in many places, diverse places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. This ain't the end. How could it be the end? How could it be the destruction, the World War Three, the ICBM destruction, right? The deliverance, if this is only the beginning of sorrows. So us hearing about the wars and the rumors of wars and all of that, it's just the beginning. Nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. You know, civil unrest is coming. You know, uh, uh, countries going at each other. It's happening. It says, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Again, all these are the beginning of sorrow. So this is just the beginning of the sorrows to come. All right. And all praise to Yahweh Hashem Yahushua because just, be, just, is, just because the beginning don't mean it's far off. You know, this thing, we knee deep into prophecies, man. We neck deep. I'm sorry. We're neck deep into prophecies by now. You know, only a few things left. The hour of temptation, the mark being implemented. All right. Jacob's trouble. Um, and which Jacob's trouble covers a whole list of things. And then Yahweh Shai comes back. You know, Jacob's trouble co covers a whole, a whole list of things. You know, brothers being martyred, persecution of the, some of the prophets. You know, the deliverance, the spiritual power. You know, putting 10,000 to flight, all of that. All of that got to happen and then the end. Okay? So, let me see. Got some more precepts bookmarked. This is the book of Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. And that's what we do. We're blowing the trumpet in Zion like the brother put up the precept. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Well, we're blowing the trumpet in Zion and sounding an alarm in the Lord's holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. That's the end all be all. And it's going to be a day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of thick clouds and of thick darkness. And the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. They have never, they have not, never, excuse me, they have not been ever the like. Neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. What is this talking about? It's talking about the day of the Lord. There's going to be a day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. How is that going to be the case? It says, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and strong. This ain't talking about human beings. It ain't talking about actual civilians and war and, and, and soldiers and warriors. It says they had not been ever been alike, neither shall be into the years of many generations. So to ballistic missiles, the weapon. They have never been anything like this. There's never been nothing like the ICB. When you read it, when you read the book of uh, um, um, it's like let me pull it up real quick. Isaiah fifty is Isaiah fifty four. Isaiah fifty four and seventeen. No, sixteen. Isaiah fifty four and sixteen. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals and the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So the Heavenly Father created the scientist, the smith, that fashions weapon. This weapon, in this case, is talking about the ICBM missiles. So the Lord created the smith that blows the coal in a fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. So the instrument for his work is talking about the nukes. All right. I, and I have created the waster to destroy. So let's go back to the book of Joel, the second chapter. It says, they have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it. Because, like the scriptures say, when we in rulership, the nations are not going to know war anymore. They're going to take their weapons and beat it into cultivating tools. It's, it's going to be the exact, exact opposite of Joel, the third chapter. So I believe it says that in Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. But 
that's what's going to happen. So this is talking about weaponry. And the, uh, it's going to read on. Verse 3, it says, A fire devoured before them. This is talking about the same thing in verse 2. A fire devoured before them. So something that devoured destroys. The fire that devoured before them is talking about the nukes. All right, the ICBM missiles. You know, I should have had, um, let me see something. Well, retaliation as world leaders, including President Biden, urge restraint. Like it marked the first time Iran has attacked Israel directly from its own soil. Explosions could be heard widely. I'm trying to find, I know I've seen something about a video about some nukes. Just want to put in the background. Let me see if this is it. And I'm not even going to play. I'm just going to mute it. But anyway, I'm going to read on. It says, A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burning. All right? The ICBM missile. Let me skip this ad. All right? A fire devoured before them, and behind them the flame burning. All right, the Lord created the smith that blow the coal and the fire, right? Like I just read. It says, let me see, I hope this is it. Let me just type in something. Just to illustrate it. If you can see it. Now we all know what a, a nuke launch looks like. No. This is the weapon of the Lord's indignation. That's the fire that devoured before them, the warhead. Alright, that's where that's where the, the power is at. It says a fire devoured before them and behind them. A flame burneth, and that's the rocket. The flame that burneth behind them is the rocket. It says, The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yet and nothing shall escape them. So at first, it's going to look like, the land is going to look like pleasant, you know, because just like America now, look at America now, compared to what it's about to look like real soon, a desolate wilderness, that's what the scriptures is depicting. All right, at first, it's going to look like, like like a garden of Eden, like like there's peas. There's certain parts of this country that's still decent looking, that's still intact. But after the nukes is shot, it's gonna look like a desolate wilderness. No man's land. It says, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yet nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen shall they run. It says, like the noise of a chariot on the tops of a mountain shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame, a fire that devoured the stubble, as strong people set in battle array. And that's still describing the missiles. Because when they shot, they're gonna be in a battle array looking like a like a, a like a bunch of horses just marching toward their towards their enemies. Alright. It says, like the noise of a flame of a fire, the fire the fire devoured the stubble, as the strong people set in battle array. Before the before their faces, the people shall be much pained. All faces faces shall gather blackness. It says, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the walls like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his way. And shall not break their rank. They shall not break their rank. So these missiles are going to break through any missile defense system. They're going to leap over from one continent to the next in perfection. They shall not break their ranks. One missile ain't going to collide with another missile and you got a chain, a domino effect, a chain of reaction going on in the outer atmosphere with just nukes going off and, and, and combusting because they're hitting each other. That's not going to happen. This is going to be precision. 
All right, this is gonna be a precise execution. And this is what the world fed. That's why it says that all faces shall gather blackness. Everybody's talking about World War Three. You know, you go to these simple ass, <clears throat> you know, um, social media websites and platforms where they just talk about gossip and other bullshit that don't matter. Now they're talking about World War Three, Iran, Iran and, and Israel and Russia and the U.S. and China. So the trumpet is being blown and the people are being afraid. All praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. But the end is not yet because the MOTB must be made mandatory. Right? This is Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, save the Lord of hosts. It shall leave them neither root nor branch. So that day is indeed coming. That day is indeed coming that's going to burn as an oven. That temperature, you know, that extreme heat from the warheads. Like they say, I forget exactly how hot they say it is, but Esau compares it to the sun. All right, we know, you know, we know the sun is hot. You know, the amount of heat we get at high noon. In the distance we are from the sun, who knows? But we know it's hot on a hot, scorching day. But when the Lord send that fire to devour Babylon the Great, it's going to be a day to be reckoned with. Everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to see it. Everybody's going to feel it. Save the Lord's elect, those that be delivered from this destruction. All right, so that was Malachi, the fourth chapter, and verse 1. This is uh, the book of Revelation. Actually, you know, let me read Isaiah 9 and 5 real quick. It says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this will be with burning and fuel of fire. So all the all the battles we've read about, know about, heard about, were, 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 were warriors, right? Like like hand-to-hand -hand combat, like ancient world style, right? Confused noise, everybody running on the battlefield, swords clashing, Spears throwing, arrows shooting, you know, throwing niggas in chokeholds and, and, and stabbing them. You know, blood, you, you went home bloody, you went back to the tent bloody at night. But this one ain't going to be like that. This one's going to be with, like it says, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. All right, the weapons of the Lord's indignation. This is what the Lord is doing. This is what he's preparing for this wicked ass, proud ass society. You know? This is what the Lord is preparing. Israel Iran uh, conflict. IDF shows intercepted Iran ballistic missile. 110 fired. See, everybody's talking about World War Three. And if you're on the shores of America when this happens, there ain't no escaping. You know, ain't no way you can run and hide. The only place you can hide is in the chariots. And enter the, like Isaiah 26, enter ye into the chambers. All right? Enter into the chambers until the indignation be overpassed. So, we get one more. And I'm going to close it up. Zechariah 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, which is talking about the land of America, Babylon the Great, right? In all the land, save the Lord, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So two two parts of the nation of Israel, a fraction, a portion, 66% of the Lord's people, Yahshua Allah, two, gonna, two parts are going to get cut off. But the remaining is going to be the third, the 33%, all right, in the land called America. That's who's going to be delivered. And I will bring the third part through the fire. The third part is being baptized through that fire right now. All right, that, through, through that furnace of adversity, through affliction, being made pure in the sight of the Lamb, purging out the iniquities, purging out the old man, the old woman, the thoughts, the evil, the, the sin, the wickedness, and being remorseful and, and repentant every day. All right, and giving diligence to make it, making your call and election short, the whole nine, everything, the whole package deal. So I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them 
as silver is refined will try them as gold is tried. So the elect is being tried and refined as gold and silver to be precious unto the coming of the day of our Lord. They shall call on my name. So apparently only the one third is going to be calling on the name. So for those Israelites that are not calling on the name of the Lord, then that, that only means that they're not part of the one third. All right. Because it clearly says they shall call on me. Well, who is the day? The third part, the third part that's going to pass through the fire and that's going to be refined as silver and that's going to be tried as gold. They are going to call on the name of the Lord, like the scriptures say. So what happened to the ones that are not calling on the name of the Lord? That could only tell me that they part of the two thirds. You know, they call it, they, they, they mocking the name of the Lord. They don't call on the name of the Lord. They don't believe it. They teach Israel. It doesn't matter who you call them, what you call them. That sounds like a two third prime membership to me. Okay. It says, they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. So the Lord said, they're going to call on me, and I'm going to hear them. You know, they're going to call on me, and I'm going to hear them. It says, I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my power. Yahweh Shai is my power. You know. So that's pretty much it. You know, I just wanted to bring this out. You know, brother, I put this precept up. Let me read it. Mahalal Allah, Yahweh, Exodus 17, 14, and the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance, remembrance of Amalek from under the sun. Mm. And that ain't happening yet. Amalek is about to be put out, right? Along with the rest of the tribes of Edom, about to be put out for good. And the scriptures also told us that we will have war with Amalek for all generations. So that time has come, you know. That time has come, what you're seeing in the news, and everybody talking about World War III. It just means we're getting closer. It just means we're getting closer. It doesn't mean the end is going to be right there and then. All right? Nukes is not going to be... See, some people think nukes are going to be shot, like, overnight. Some people really think that. Some people think, you know, they go to sleep with anxiety, wondering, like, damn, you know, you know, I hope the nukes ain't shot. You know, they ignore the news and what they're hearing because of anxiety. Not because it's bullshit news and mainstream media news, but because of anxiety and the fear of the unknown. So the nukes is not gonna be shot overnight, not tonight, you know, not tomorrow night, not, not not next week. But why I say that? Because we know we can say we know what's gonna happen. We know the out of temptation gotta happen. We know Jacob's trouble gotta pop up. We know, we know we use common sense and and reality. Like use use your brain, use your mind, like factor in the things that the the prophecies that the Lord said will happen and you ask yourself, is is it an overnight thing? No, it ain't. It's not an overnight thing. So we're not clocking in time in the Lord, our power at all. It's just we're, we're measuring the times diligently and being circumspect. So know what time you're in. In the book of Second Peter, it say, knowing that all these things shall be dissolved, what man and person are you to be? So, you know, what kind of person you're going to be knowing all this shit about to hit the fan and all hell is getting ready to break loose? You know, be a, a righteous soul, so to speak. You know, one that truly fears Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and will do everything in your power to remain on his good side. You know, do everything in your power to remain on the Lord's good side and to be found worthy to stand before the Lord when he comes back to wreak havoc on this place. You know, so I'm going to end it here. I pray and hope to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rekakwadash that this was an edifying lesson to the Lord's elect. You know, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai brought a thumb to you and Y'all by Shem Yahweh Shai, brought a thumb to the apostles, elder bishops of Great Millstone, who taught me his truth. And of course, you know, shalom to the elect. Till next time, shalom.